Hello YouTube, this is Matt Pullen, and I'm going to present a lesson on uh, doubled rooks on the 7th rank. Uh, one of the signs that uh, you are dominating the position is you're able to establish doubled rooks on the 7th rank. Uh, these rooks uh, attack the, uh, the rank where the enemy pawns start out, so they can gobble up any enemy pawns that have not moved yet. Uh, this is why they're sometimes referred to as pigs on the 7th. And, uh, they can also uh, create uh, checkmate patterns against the enemy king on the back rank. And uh, that's what we'll be focusing on uh, in this video. Now here, uh, white has uh, two rooks on the seventh rank, and the black king is com uh, confined to the back rank. So white can play uh, rook to g8. This is mate, because the rook takes away all the squares on the back rank, and the other rook takes away all the squares on the seventh rank. So there are no squares for the black king to move to. Uh, this is checkmate. Likewise, rook b8 is also mate. Uh, this uh, rook takes away all the squares on the back rank, and this rook takes away the squares on the seventh rank. Checkmate. Uh, if it were black's move here, uh, then the best defense to this would be to approach the closest rook. You know, because uh, like uh, like most things that rooks do. Uh, this checkmate pattern is best uh, thrown from far away. So if the black king approaches uh, this white rook on uh, g7, now there's no checkmate. Uh, if rook g8 check, then the black king can just take this rook. And if uh, rook b8 check, well, uh, this king is close enough to this rook that you know the rook doesn't really control all of the seventh rank. So just king takes rook. However, uh, in this position, white should play rook g c7, uh, because this way black no longer can approach the rook. He's too far away, and uh, white will you know, deliver checkmate uh, next move with one of the rooks. So this will be mate. Um, next position. The uh, white rooks need to get distance from the black king to uh, develop this mate. Uh, this is achieved by the following. Uh, rook check, king g8 is forced. Rook check, king f8 is forced. Rook a7. Now white is threatening to deliver checkmate with either rook. So black approaches the closest rook, you know, threatening the rook on uh, h7. But now rook hb7, and uh, you know, black will be mated next move because the white rooks have gained distance. Okay, here is another position where, whoops, sorry, it's not another position. Uh, yeah, here's another position. Uh, the pawn on the sixth rank augments the uh, power of the uh, rooks doubled on the seventh rank. For instance, here, after rook h7 check, king g8, rook a g7 check, king f8, this pawn protects the rook. So, rook h8 is checkmate. Now, notice in the initial position, uh, the, ba the black rook controls the entire 8th rank, so there's no 8th rank check. In order to create an 8th rank check, we need to drive the black king away from the wall, and uh, that's, that's, where, that's where we uh, gain the ability to throw our check. Alright, so does this actually come up in uh, you know, play? Yes, it does all the time. Uh, this is uh, a recent tournament game of mine. I had to decide how I wanted to capture the black queen. And uh, we're near the end game. Uh, I'm up in exchange for a pawn. And my idea was to get the rook to the seventh rank. After rook takes e3, knight takes d5, it's not clear how uh, white is going to get a rook to the seventh rank. So I took with pawn. Now black has a choice, how to capture the bishop on d5. If c takes d5, my idea was to play rook c1, uh, getting on the open c file, and if my opponent allows, landing on the seventh rank. So knight takes d5 was played, and I pushed my pass pawn e4. Uh, my opponent played knight c3, attacking the rook and also the pawn on a2. 
and I ignored the pawn and played rook d7, achieving one rook on the 7th rank. Now my opponent captured the pawn. Here I had to, uh, I knew that rook e8 would uh, lead to a win for me, as I'll show in the game. I had to also calculate the defense, uh, knight to c3. So I played e5, and I had to see knight c3, uh, the plan of getting the knight back and stopping the pawn was what I was concerned with, but it doesn't work. e6, knight d5, e7, rook e8, rook d8, threatening the black rook. So uh, black has to play knight c7. So far, so good. Uh, rook takes, knight takes, rook f1, threatening to check and win the knight. So kg7, rook f8, knight has to move, queen takes, winning the knight, and uh, this ending is won easily by white. So instead of knight c3, my opponent tried rook e8. This is the move that I saw would lead to a win for me. Uh, he tries to blockade the pass pawn, but I give up the pass pawn. I play rook f1, getting on the uh, open f file with the objective of reaching the seventh rank. Now, if my opponent captures this pawn, then is a checkmate with the two rooks. So to stop this, my opponent played king g8. But I still, I ignored my pass pawn, and I played uh, rook ff7, sacrificing it to attain the two rooks doubled on the seventh rank. Because I foresaw that I was going to lose this pawn, but I was going to be able to capture this pawn, this pawn, this pawn, and the knight. Here's how that works. Uh, my opponent played, well first of all, rook f8, if, you're, if you have doubled rooks on the 7th rank, rook f8 is always a blunder, because you have rook check, king over, check, and then this is mate, because the black's ki black king's only escape is taken away. So, keep that in mind, rook f8 is always bad. Um, rook takes e5, my opponent captured the pawn, and I played check. After king f8, I play rook check. King e8. Rook takes b7. I've captured one pawn and I'm threatening you know, to checkmate two different ways. My opponent approaches the closest rook and I take here. Now I'm also threatening again to checkmate two different ways. So my opponent approached. I play rook bg7 check. King f8. Rook takes. Now I'm threatening two different checkmates and also threatening the knight on a2. So my opponent uh, played king g8, again, attacking this rook, so I, you know, if uh, rook takes knight, he can just take my other rook. But I just, you know, gained distance with rook hb7. So now this threatens mate with either rook and also the knight. So my opponent blocked the back rank with rook e8, and I captured his knight. Now I'm up a rook, my opponent could resign but didn't. Uh, he instead played rook c8, getting behind his passed pawn. So I took the 7th rank again, rook a a7, c5, rook g7 check, king f8, uh, rook a f7 check, king e8, and now rook c7, threatening to checkmate on uh, g8 and also capture the rook. So my opponent would be forced to trade rooks here, so he resigned. Now if on this check he goes to the corner h8, well, now we win like this, rook h7 check, king g8, rook g7 check, king f8, and now rook h8 check with a skewer, forcing the trade of rooks. So I hope you learned from this uh, lesson about the power of having uh, you know, two rooks on the seventh rank. And uh, once, you've, uh, once you've established, uh, you know, played this game over again and uh, reminded yourself of the mechanism for uh, repeatedly threatening checkmate, in order to win uh, further material, then uh, you'll be able to use this tactic hopefully in your own games. Thank you for watching and uh, have a nice day.